Oh, hey there. Welcome to this week's episode of Healthyish with Nutritionish. So I've had, I have this happen to me at least, at least 10 times a week personally with my own clients, let alone how often we probably have this conversation as a company. So I wanted to make this episode so I could maybe just like point people in the direction of this podcast episode when this happens. But also if my clients struggle with it, I'm sure the masses struggle with it too. So I figured it was a good topic to do a little episode on. So have you ever, let's say you go out to dinner and let's even say you order really healthy, right? You like order the salad or you order whatever you feel like you're supposed to order if you're trying to be healthy. And you get on the scale the next day, like super excited about your decision. And not only is it not down, but it's actually like up a few pounds. Maybe it's up like three or four pounds. And you're like, I literally can't even go out to dinner without gaining weight. Or let's say you feel like you've been eating really well. Um, You've been to the gym a couple times, you're eating really well. And you get on the scale excited to like see the fruits of your labor. And not only is it not down, but maybe it's up a few pounds. Have you ever experienced this? So if this is happening to you or has happened to you, don't jump out a window just yet. There's a perfectly logical explanation for this. And hopefully by the end of this episode, you have a really good understanding. So maybe next time it happens, maybe you'll still be like a little annoyed, but not as annoyed because you'll really like understand what you're looking at. Because I've had people come into my office and be like, literally, I can't even go out to eat. If I go out to eat, I gain a pound. If I have like four potato chips, I gain a pound. That's not what's actually happening. So here's the best way I can explain this to you. There's, let's think, call it like two types of weight. There's weight that like belongs to you and then there's weight that does not belong to you. The weight that belongs to you is body fat until you lose it, it's muscle, it's your bones, it's your organs, it's things like that. Those things are not going to fluctuate day to day. Weight that does not belong to you, like clothing weight, or in this case is pretty much what we're talking about is water weight, those things can fluctuate day to day. So even if you got on the scale tomorrow and you noticed that you lost or gained a pound, you didn't really lose or gain a pound, you're looking at a water fluctuation. Very similar to like, let's say you got on the scale one day totally naked, and then the next day you got on wearing like a giant parka. Like yes, the second day the weight would be more on the scale because it's the sum total of you plus parka um, versus the day before you didn't have the parka. Now you're not a bigger person or a smaller person or a leaner person with or without the parka, but your weight on the scale is gonna look different because the scale doesn't know to differentiate between water weight, parka weight, clothing weight, whatever. It's just showing you the sum total of your weight. So I hope that makes sense so far. So if you got on the scale every single day, which I don't recommend for a million reasons, but let's just say you did. If you got on the scale every day, it would be very unlikely that your weight would be exactly the same every single day because of these things and these parts of our weight that can fluctuate, which again, you're not bigger or smaller for those parts. It's just that, you know, sometimes you have more water weight in you than others. Sometimes your clothing might be heavier than other times things like that. Now, over time, body fat will go up or down. Over time, even muscle can go up or down, but it would take, it usually takes a full six to eight days to see like a pound of body fat loss, for example. And just like a quick spark note version as to like why that happens, and we could do a deep dive into this in another episode, but basically there's 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. So you can't gain or lose a pound of fat in a day. It would take a full like six to eight days to really see that happen. Now, when you're going out to dinner and you see the weight up the next day, or if you ate something salty and you see the weight go up the next day, um, that's always water weight. And typically, when you see those fluctuations, because most people, you know, most people, if they're weighing themselves, they're getting on the scale first thing in the morning naked, because that's when you're going to be the lightest, which I understand. But um, if so, if you are seeing kind of fluctuations day to day, nine times out of ten, it's water weight. So what causes water retention? There's a couple of things, but there's four main ones. The most common one is gonna be salt. Now here's the deal. Anytime that you go out to eat, it doesn't matter what you order, there's going to be at least a full day's worth of sodium in that meal. And the reason is, is that salt's a preservative and it's a non-chemically preservative. So if I own a restaurant and I douse my food in sodium, I can keep it fresh a couple extra days, which saves me money. It also makes food taste better, right? And you have to remember, restaurants' goals are not necessarily to make sure they're serving you the healthiest food. Their goals are to make sure they're serving you the most delicious food and also the freshest food at the lowest cost. So restaurant food is loaded with sodium. And not all restaurants are required to post their nutrition information on their menu boards. Only only chains are. So if you ever wanted to really check it out, like pick whatever your favorite chain is and Google like, 
I don't know, like Applebee's nutrition information. And just like look at the sodium column and you'll see these astronomically high numbers. And then you might be like, no, that's just because they're a chain. It's the same thing across the board. Whenever restaurants are getting their food, it's loaded with sodium even before it gets to you because that's how they keep it fresh. So just keep in mind in the back of your head, anytime that you go out to eat the next day, it's very possible your weight might be up, not because you actually gained weight, not because you're less lean, not because you're more fat, whatever you want to call it, not because you actually did anything wrong at all. It's just that for 24 to 48 hours, your body's going to have extra salt in it. And we know that salt will make you retain water. If you like had a puddle of salts a puddle of salt. Salt doesn't come in puddles. If you had a little bit of salt on your counter and you put a little bit of water on it, you would know that the the salt would absorb the water. And that's essentially what's going on with you. Anything that you drink after you eat that meal, your body's going to kind of suck up like a sponge. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the four kind, the four reasons why you might be retaining water weight. And then we're going to go over how to get rid of it faster. So number one, sodium, which again comes from eating out. It comes from highly processed foods. It'll be in like prepackaged stuff. It'll be in frozen stuff. It'll be in canned stuff. Um, All those things will be a little high in sodium. And as long as your blood pressure is not high, it's okay to have salt in your diet. I just want to make sure when you get on the scale the next day, if you are getting on the scale the next day, that you know what you're looking at and you're not thinking that you're doing something wrong and give up on all of your healthy eating plans and ideas. So the first one is too much salt. The second one that can make you retain water is hormones. So guys, you don't have to worry about this. Ladies, one awesome thing for us is that when we get close to our periods, we retain water. Um, It always surprises me how many women don't know this around. It depends on the person, but typically like it could be a full week before. Sometimes it's as few as like two or three days before you could retain on the lower side too, on the higher side, up to six pounds of water right before your period. That's why you feel like bloated and distended. It's not because you actually gain weight during your period, but your body will will um, retain water in preparation for you getting your period. So just like another fun thing, ladies, that we have to deal with. But again, if you know it's not real, if you know it's temporary, it'll just make you feel more sane. So number one, salt. Number two, hormones. Number three, alcohol. So alcohol is a diuretic. Do you guys remember like back in your college days, you'd like drink a ton and then like the next day you get up and you'd be like, ooh, I feel so skinny. Like your stomach's nice and flat. And then like as the day goes on, it progressively gets like bigger. (laughs) That's because you will retain water also when you drink alcohol. And the reason why is going to kind of tie into the fourth reason. So we'll get to that in a second. But basically what's going on is whenever you dehydrate yourself, your body will retain water from that as well because your body's trying to keep you alive. When you drink alcohol, alcohol is a diuretic. That's why, so diuretic means it makes you pee a lot. It makes you lose water. Do you ever like, quote unquote, break the seal where you start drinking and you pee and then once you start, you literally can't stop. It's because alcohol is a diuretic. It draws all the water out of you. Which brings me to my fourth reason, if you're not drinking enough, slash if you get dehydrated, your body will also retain water for that reason too. Now the reason is, let's say your fluid levels were able to get really, really low. If your fluid levels got to a certain point and they were so low, your heart physically wouldn't be able to beat hard enough to get blood and oxygen and nutrients throughout your whole body. So there's this fun little mechanism in your body where when your fluid levels get too low, it says, start storing water. Fluid levels are getting too low. So that doesn't happen to you. It's trying to keep you alive. So your body will store, 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 store until it gets to a saturation point and then it will release and let it go. So that is the fourth reason. If you're dehydrated or you're actually not drinking enough, your body in, you know, favor of trying to keep you alive will make the choice to retain water instead of letting you pee it out. So just to recap really quick, four reasons why we retain water. One, salt slash eating out because all restaurant food is going to be loaded with sodium. That doesn't, again, mean to avoid it. It just means that if you eat out and then you get on the scale the next day, I just want to make sure you know what you're looking at because a lot of times people feel like they can't do any of that stuff and that's not true. Number two, hormones, periods. Guys, one more thing that you're lucky that you don't have to deal with. Ladies, sorry, but just part of it. But again, if you know, then it just makes it a little bit more palatable when it happens. Uh, Number three, alcohol. Breaking the seal means that you lose a lot of fluids when you lose a lot of fluids slash reason number four when you get dehydrated your body to keep you alive is going to start storing water so that your heart doesn't have to beat so hard to get blood and oxygen and nutrients and all that fun stuff throughout your body 
So how do you know if it's fluid retention or not or water fluctuation or not? A um, couple signs. Number one, if it changes within a very short time frame. So again, it takes about you know six to eight days to actually see changes in your body fat and or muscle mass. Muscle mass actually takes a little bit longer. So if you notice like day-to-day fluctuations, it's water weight. Um, if you notice like swelling in like your fingers or your wrists or your ankles. So like sometimes people feel in their fingers, like if they bend their fingers and they're retaining water, they'll actually feel it in their fingers. I will always notice it because if I'm wearing like a hair tie around my wrist, I'll notice like it's like enveloped in my wrist. Like I'll have like a, like a indent on my wrist. Or if you wear like socks, you'll notice like you might have like those sock lines around your ankles. Um, so those are all some, some signs that it's probably a water retention thing. Or if you've done any of the things that I said, if you ate out yesterday, it doesn't matter what you ordered. It's like literally inevitable. Um, I was actually trying to prove this point to one of my clients. So I got on the scale and I showed her like on a, on a Friday morning. And then I took a picture for her on a Saturday after I went out for like sashimi, which sashimi is probably one of the lowest calorie things you could get out. But again, very heavy in salt. So she could see I was up like four pounds the next day. Um, again, it was gone within 24 to 48 hours, but if, if I didn't know I was looking at water weight, I'd be super frustrated, which is what I hear a lot of people experiencing when this happens. So if any of these things, if you've done any of these things that we've talked about, if you notice like drastic kind of fluctuations, like day-to-day fluctuations, or if you notice, um, or if you notice like any of those like kind of lines in your like wrist, if you're wearing a hair tie, or if you're wearing like, like a sock. The best point of comparison I can make in how water weight plays into this whole big weight process is the stock market, right? So if you're looking at the stock market hour by hour, you might be like, oh my gosh, I'm up, I'm down, I'm up, I'm down, I'm up five cents, I'm down four cents, I'm up 20 cents, I'm down a dollar, like whatever it is. Those are like water fluctuations. But over time, even, you know, in not great stock market times, over time, the stock market goes up. I want to say it's like up like 7% or something. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a financial person, but I think that's what it is. Over time, if you choose the right stocks, if you're doing the right thing, it goes up in a direction over time. Weight, when you're doing the right thing, like true body fat weight will go down in the right direction or up, whatever, based on how you're eating over time. So I think the stock market is a really good comparison when we're comparing like water fluctuations to actual weight gains or losses it's kind of the same thing you would see like the little fluctuations in your money during the day or over a couple of days but nothing significant um and it would kind of always return back to baseline but over time if you chose the right stocks you would see going up or or not if you would see it going down over time so that's how you can tell if it's water weight or actual weight now the million dollar question how the hell do we get rid of this shit (laughs) Before we get into that, for those of you guys who don't know me, you're like, who is this nutritionist character? My name is Michelle. About 10 years ago, I was I was so frustrated, guys, because here's what was happening. I grew up with family members and even myself a little bit where like everybody was like constantly like on or off a diet. So like as a collective, we would all be like so good and eating like grilled chicken and egg whites and salad and things we really freaking hated and missing out on social events and like getting praised for passing up dessert and just like not living. And then we would do it till we literally couldn't do it anymore. And then we would go in the exact opposite direction and like gain all the way back. So I was fascinated with this cycle. So when I, when I went away to college a bajillion years ago, I studied nutrition, but I also studied psychology, the science behind habit change. And I created this incredible program, if I do say so myself, that's helped over 10,000 people lose weight, but keep it off in a way that's maintainable. Cause we actually like get to the root of the problem. If your problem is emotional eating, we're going to fix it. If your problem is that like, you just don't know how to like prepare stuff for yourself. We're going to fix it. Like we really get to the root of the problem in a way that feels good. We get you into really amazing habits that work with your lifestyle, your food preferences, your body type. And then we rinse and repeat to the point where it just becomes automatic. So our long-term success rate is like over 80% at this point where the average diet, if that's the route you want to go is less than 5%. So So way better results. It's a really enjoyable process. Our program is all one-on-one. You're going to work one-on-one with someone who's an absolute expert in our framework, who really cares about you. You get weekly sessions and we're having a summer special. So I'm going to link this in our show notes. It's nutritionmish.com slash sign up. You can either sign up there or request some more information. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer. My goal is to change the way America eats. All right. It doesn't have to be feast or famine. It doesn't have to be like dieting or gorging. Like there's a really nice middle lane in between there. And that's where I want to show you. So check it out, nutritionmish.com slash sign up. I will link it in the show notes and we are excited to work with you. 
Okay, so back to the million dollar question. How do I get this off? So there's a couple things you can do. We, we actually make a product, it's called Bloat Banisher. If it really bothers you, you can, I'll, I'll link it in our show notes. You can go to nutritionmish.com, click on the goods, that's our, that's our online store, and just look for a product called Bloat Banisher. Like I said, I'll link it below. If you take the Bloat Banisher supplement, it makes, you know, it, it gets rid of it in a couple hours. If you do decide you wanna take that though, don't be out because you'll be peeing. I remember once, so when I wouldn't, again, we've had this product for a little while. When I was in, a little bit younger and my friends and I, we would be like in the bar, right? Trying to like look cute. And one time we took it like, you know, like right before we went out and we all were just like being in the bathroom the entire night. So um, we look great in the bathroom, but you know, not exactly the vibe we were going for. So make sure you take it when you're home. So you could do something like that. Or the, a really good blanket option is just drink more water, which sounds so counterintuitive. It's actually a mistake a lot of people make when they know they're bloated or they know they're retaining water. People tend to like shy away from water because they're like, I don't want to bloat. I don't want to retain more. It's actually not how it works. Your body will either, if it's, it's, if it's from sodium, you'll be able to like flush out the sodium, right? So that way your body won't be holding onto it anymore. So if you're, if you're retaining water because you had too much salt, drink more water, flush the salt out and you'll be good within like 24 to 48 hours. Um, the other reason would be like if you were not, you know, if you were dehydrated because you were, you know, you didn't drinking enough or, or let's say it was alcohol. Again, once your body gets to that saturation point where it realizes that it's no longer dehydrated, it'll start to flush out the extra. So the, the main solution for this is a little counterintuitive, but it's actually to drink more. So I would say if you normally drink, you know, three bottles of water a day, maybe throw in four. If you normally drink four, throw in five. You don't have to drown yourself, but just drink a little bit extra and just be a little bit more on top of it. And that'll help flush the water weight out faster. The less you drink, the longer it will take. Okay, so I hope that makes you a little bit more sane if you're weighing yourself all the time or you're noticing those fluctuations back and forth. Just to recap really, really fast. If you notice day-to-day fluctuations, it's water weight. If you notice like your ankles are a little swollen, your fingers a little swollen, your wrists a little bit swollen, it's water weight. If you ate out the day before or had a lot of sodium in your diet, if you're getting your period or have a hormonal fluctuation, not drinking enough or drank alcohol within the last 24 hours, it's water weight. Water weight will fluctuate. It doesn't mean you're bigger for it. It doesn't mean that you're less lean. It doesn't mean that you didn't actually lose weight if that's what you're trying to do. You just might not be able to see it. And the best thing to do is drink a ton of water, flush it out of your system. You could take a supplement like the bloat banisher if it's really something that's bothering you, if you want to get it out of your system a little faster. I recommend the bloat banisher, especially like, let's say, like I always bring it on vacation with me because if you're on vacation, like every meal is out. And if you're in a bathing suit, that makes it a little bit harder. Um, So I always bring it with me like on vacation, things like that. Otherwise, like I said, you could just drink a lot of water, flush it out of your system. It's all good. So day-to-day fluctuations, water weight, movement over time on the scale is probably real weight. Like I said, real weight takes about six to eight days. So if you notice a day-to-day fluctuation, that's another really good sign that it's water weight. So I hope this episode helped you. I hope this made sense. I hope maybe this deters you from weighing yourself every two seconds, or if you are at least knowing what you're looking at so you don't get discouraged. But make sure that you check us out next week for Healthy-ish with Nutrish Mish. Make sure you rate and are subscribed. Five stars, please. Thank you. We'll see you next week.